The world is going to end tomorrow. I need to sell all my pottery so I can get a bunch of money and go out and have the night of my life tonight. So he sold all his pottery for far less than it was worth. And I presume he went out and had whatever he might define as the night of his life. And then the next morning, he probably woke up and realized his mistake, or maybe tried to recalculate the day that the world would end. Now, we hear stories like this all the time, right? Someone predicts the day, doomsday, the apocalypse. And for some reason, other people follow that person, and then they try to live it up on their last few days on Earth. Now, this man who sold his pottery was trying to prepare for the end. Or I suppose we should say he realized he wasn't prepared for the end. He wasn't ready. And then he tried to fit it all in to one day, one day before the end of the world. It kind of reminds me maybe of a a student who procrastinates a paper until the night before. Not that I would know anything about that, of course. <laughs> Today I want to talk a little bit about preparation, about being prepared. Specifically, what it means to be prepared as a Christian. What is Christian preparation? Well, today is the first day of Advent. The season in which we remember the days leading up to Christ's birth. When we remember the time when the Jews were eagerly awaiting, anticipating the coming of their Messiah. They didn't know when it would be, but they knew he was coming. And they were on the lookout. Now because it's the season of Advent, we might think it would seem natural for our scripture readings today to be about maybe the angel coming speak to Mary, or coming to speak to Joseph, or perhaps John the Baptist preparing the way. That seems like a good place to start with Advent, right? But that's not what we get. That's not what the lectionary gives us. Instead, we get this weird reading from the book of Luke that's about the end. The end of time. The things that have to take place before Jesus comes back. So what's going on here? Why do we start Advent at the end? Well, there are two sides to Advent. On the one hand, Advent invites us back to reenact, to relive the drama, to sit with Mary and Joseph and John the Baptist as they prepare the way for Jesus and greet him on Christmas morning. It invites us back into that space. But on the other hand, Advent invites us to look forward, to turn our gaze to Christ's second coming and the preparation that we undergo here and now to make sure that we are able to greet Jesus when he comes again. Like the Jews, before Christ's first coming, we don't know when Jesus is coming back. We don't know. In fact, he tells us that no one will know. No one will know the day or the hour, even if there's some guy over here who says, oh, I know, I calculated it, and people are following him. We don't know. And because of that, Jesus tells us in our gospel today, to be ready at all times. Be on guard, he says. Be on guard. Be alert at all times. This isn't the type of preparation that you do the day before by selling all your pottery and getting a bunch of money. And it's not the type of preparation you do by going out um, on December 24th and buying all of your Christmas gifts for your family. This is a continuous thing. You do always, at all times, it's a state of being, a way of life. And we can't let it go to the last minute because we don't know when the last minute is. We don't know. We have to keep going. It's an ongoing preparation. 
in our gospel reading today, Jesus presents us with two types of people, two types of reactions to the things that will occur before he returns. So Jesus says, when these things start to take place, people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Fear, there's that word, fear. Now when I look around the world, around our country, around our communities, I see a lot of fear. I do. We're transfixed with this idea of the end, of the apocalypse. Any look into Hollywood, recent TV shows, movies, will show you that. We're obsessed with it. And we fear it. But it's not just that. It's things in our own communities that happen seemingly on a daily basis. Shootings. Attacks from ISIS. It's all around us. And we fear it. And Jesus even says in this same gospel reading, nations will be confused by the roaring of the sea and the waters. I can't help but remember the fear after Hurricane Katrina, after the tsunami in Japan, when people saw what the waters could do, and they, and they said, how do we defend against that? What do we do? It's fear. So this is one reaction that people have when they look around and they see these devastating things happening, which have been happening for the last 2,000 years, mind you. We're not unique in that regard. It may not have been named ISIS hundreds of years back, but it's always been going on. So that's one camp, fear. But Jesus shows us a different response. Jesus says, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, for your redemption is drawing near. Now, this seems rather counterintuitive, doesn't it? I mean, our instinct when we're faced with something fearful is fight or flight, right? We either arm ourselves and attempt to fight against the thing that is causing our fear, or we run and hide from it, or we freeze. That's another option. We just don't know what to do, and we freeze. We panic. Stand up and raise your heads, for your redemption is drawing near. So what's the difference between these two groups of people? What's the difference? What is it that makes the people who fear these things respond in fear? And the people who raise their heads and say, my redemption is drawing near. What is it that makes them able to respond in that way? Well, I think the answer has something to do with preparation. With this idea of Advent. See, for those who respond in fear, they respond in fear because there's a big unknown for them. All these things are happening, and for them, their mind wanders, and they think, oh, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. You know? And they imagine all these scenarios of the end of the world and these terrible things that leaves everything in utter darkness. For those who stand up and raise their heads, they know a different story. They know a bigger story. They know something that these other people don't know. They know that in the end, Jesus is coming back. We don't know when, but we know he's coming. We know the end of the story. When we look around and see these things, we don't have to live in this fear, wondering, wondering, just guessing what our destiny is, because we already know. We already know. We are prepared. Of course, this presents us with a little bit of a problem. Because as Christians, we're supposed to be in this camp. 
that is ready, that is prepared to meet Jesus, that stands up and raises our heads. But really, a lot of the time, we're over here. We're filled with fear. We forget the larger picture. We aren't thinking about Christ's second coming. We're just thinking about the devastation that's coming on around us. Right? <coughs> so what's happening here? Why is there this discrepancy? Well, maybe it's because there's a lack in our faith. In Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the reading that we read for today, he writes to the church of Thessalonica, Night and day we pray most eagerly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now, I know there are things lacking in my faith. I'm willing to bet there's probably things lacking in your faith as well. There are things lacking in our faith, let's say. And I don't necessarily think it's a lack in faith to have fear at certain times. But I do think it's a lack in faith to fear the end to fear Christ's second coming. You see, those who fear Christ coming back are those who know that when Christ comes back, he'll say to them, I never knew you. And if these people are honest with themselves, the only thing they could say back to Jesus is, well, I never knew you either. You know, maybe I sat in church for years. <clears throat> Maybe I knew about you, but I, I didn't know you. I didn't know you, Jesus. See, in order to welcome this king, in order to welcome Jesus, we have to know this Jesus. And that, that is the key to Christian preparation. That is what it means for us to be prepared. That is what Advent is. See, we live in between, this in-between state, between Christ's first coming and Christ's second coming. But that does not mean that Jesus is inaccessible to us. Jesus is nearer to us than we are to, him, to ourselves. But many of us still don't know him. We prepare for Christ's coming by drawing near to him here and now. We pave the way for the coming of our king by greeting him in our lives today. So that when he comes, we can greet him as someone we know better than our best friend. Not as some stranger we heard about sitting in a pew. Advent is a time for us to examine ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to show me how, in what ways am I lacking in faith? In what ways is my lack of faith causing me to sit in this camp of fear instead of standing up and raising my head to greet my king? But how do we actually do this? <coughs> I mean, it's one thing to say we need to draw close to Christ. But how do we do that? We're busy people. We, we live real lives. Most of us go through an entire days without ever having the thought, oh, I need to draw closer to Christ today. And even if you're already close, you can always grow closer to Christ. Well, I think the first step is desire. See, if I don't desire to draw close to Christ, I'm not going to do anything to make sure that I am drawing close to Christ. And unfortunately, I'm not St. Paul. I'm not just walking down the street and a light hits me and I have no choice but to draw close to Christ. If I want to draw close to Christ, I have to want to be close to Christ. And sometimes we have to pray, Holy Spirit, Help me to want 
to be close to Christ. Help me to desire that intimacy and that relationship. And then once we have that desire to draw close to Christ, there are a variety of things we can do to establish that relationship. Not as a last minute thing, but as an ongoing day after day. The things that sustain us year after year and make us continually prepared, continually alert, continually ready to greet our King. I mean, these are simple things, like encountering Christ in the Scriptures daily, praying daily, developing some routine that's able to give life and grant this deep intimacy with Jesus Christ. That is what it means to be prepared as a Christian, to know Jesus know Jesus here and now. And that is what Advent is for. It's for a new dedication of devotion to Jesus Christ. So as we go and leave this church and come back for the next Sunday of Advent, let us each consider one way, one concrete way that we can deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ through this Advent season. I mean, it may be developing a specific reading of the Bible over the next four weeks. It may be a certain commitment to prayer. But it needs to be something real. It can't just be this abstract thought if I want to draw closer to Christ. We need to put that desire into action. Because if that desire is not put into action, then it's really no true desire. So as we go our separate ways, let us prepare our hearts, examine our hearts, and turn to Jesus Christ. So that when that day comes, neither of us will say to one another, I never knew you. May the Lord grant us peace.